Every time you hear this sound, it's time to turn the page. <laughs> Don't turn it yet. That was just practice. Now, let's get on with our story. I love my friends. They're so supportive and loving. <laughs> Makes me so happy. Oof. Done with Pilates, and now it's time for the cold shower. <laughs> You know, I'm never like, oh my god, yes, it's time for a cold shower, especially in the winter. It's painful, it's uncomfortable, and I don't like it. But I do feel good when I do it. I do it for the purpose of clearing my mind and practicing discipline. So I try to just like incorporate small forms of discipline from my daily routine so that discipline itself is a muscle that I'm always training. So in my last video, I talk about being in the state of confusion, figuring life out in your 20s, and learning to trust yourself. And so I thought I would expand on that idea a little bit more and share with you guys why I'm confused and the things that I've been personally trying to challenge and question and to figure out. But before we do that, let me do my hair really quickly and then I'll catch you guys up on what has been really going on. So as promised, I'm going to expand on what I said in my last video and I wouldn't even say that it's confusion itself. It's more so of teetering between what is right and what is not. And I always stay grounded with the idea of nothing's really right or wrong, it's just what it is. And this is just what it is right now. <laughs> so what I'm mainly confused about and what I'm questioning is if I chose the right path because I'm not super deep in yet, but I'm, I'm pretty committed. And I just can't help but wonder if this is for me. Um, some of you guys may know I'm in finance, but I can't help but wonder if I should have done something else, like something more creative. Or should I have stuck with med because that's what I originally went to college studying for. I always had the idea of becoming a doctor. And then for a period of time, I wanted to become a professor and teach for the rest of my life because I love teaching and all those things. And now I'm a woman in finance. <laughs> so it's like, what happened? Um, I do like what I do and I love the career that I'm in. But I'm a curious human being and I love learning about everything. And the more I learn, the more I want to venture out and try new things. So that's kind of like where my dilemma is. It's like, should I be persistent and just like do what I'm doing or should I venture out and try new things and those things can be correlated I can pursue something else without having to sacrifice what I have right now and I feel like this is a dilemma that many people in their early 20s struggle with it's like this dilemma of having so many interests and curiosity and want to venture out into different fields while worried that the curiosity would get the best of them and they wouldn't have a you know consistent persistent career. It's normal to run to the limits of exploration because while it is good to explore, it's also important to be persistent in what you do. That's just kind of like where my confusion comes in. But I hope you guys have a better understanding of my state of confusion. It's more so just like reasonable questioning of where I'm at. It's good to question, but it's not good to quit. Double Qs. <laughs> that was so lame. All right, guys, let's go send you guys to Luna. It's okay. Luna, sit down, sit down, sit. Okay, sit. I had this light right here that came with my GoPro, and I love it. I should have gotten one a lot earlier in my game because that will have saved me a lot of footage. I'm going to miss you guys dearly, truly. They look so cute. <laughs> But I was like doing his own thing, Mochi's like, I need hugs now. Okay, let's go. Spring coming in, I love to see it, it's a better day. Hot summer, get the bread and butter, then I get away. Leaves falling on a lawn, day ain't nothing wrong for turn away. Okay, I arrived with the babies. Say hi, babies. <laughs> they have been quite eager to- Oh my god, Mochi! He's been waiting to do that. I swear to you, he's been waiting to do that. The whole ride, he's been like, hmm. Perfect timing because Kuna just got back, so she should be, like, literally here. I think I see her. Okay. Michelle, everybody in my bangs, I know they care. They're so cute. I'm waiting for an update. <laughs> okay, this is the dog stuff. Yeah. Okay, so this is the dog stuff. Packed everything they put. Okay, and this is your uh, ski stuff. Oh my god, I asked for that. Yeah, it's so fun. I was 
was looking for hours. Sorry, I've been fishing because that's something I always wanted to do. Oh my gosh, she needs it. We forgot. She bought a rainbow way to go. Thank you for my Crazy how something so special to me don't mean nothing to you. I came from nothing to hear. I don't got nothing to prove. I do not fuck with the rules. Yeah, I am happy I'm getting it. And I ain't never had to change up. I do not listen to rhetoric. Yeah, I know that I'm the same. The question up in the air is, who do I want to be? And a good way to answer that question is to look at the people who you admire. So who in your life do you look up to? Do you want to be? Or whose work do you admire? And for me, I really admire people like Tim Ferriss, Oprah Winfrey, Naval Ravikant, Sarah Blakely. And so I really look up to people who are extremely curious about the world around them and use that as a way to funnel their own knowledge and to funnel what they create and produce. But I don't know how to manifest that into my own reality. <laughs> And that's another problem, but it's okay. That's a problem to deal with later on. Not even a problem, but maybe just something to figure out. Um, but at least it's good to know who you admire, who you look up to, because those are the people that you probably will want to be like one day, um, in most cases. Also, Mr. Beast, he's someone that I admire as well. So just look at the people in your life that you admire, and that's a really good indicator of the type of person you want to be. I was listening to the Tim Ferriss show featuring James Clear, and Clear asked the question, what are you optimizing for? And I believe this is an important question to reflect on because in the midst of our busy lives, we have to pull back and remind ourselves of the bigger picture. What am I trying to accomplish and how can I execute in the most effective, optimal way? Another question to ask is, does the amount of attention I'm giving to an activity match its true importance? Many of us are probably optimizing for time as well as efficiency results and environment. But time is the shiny gold star. And in order to optimize, we have to know how much energy and effort we are investing in the inputs of our lives. I recommend doing an activity audit of your life and deciphering which activities fill and drain your cup. What you do reflects what you think of yourself. So do more of the ones that fill and less of the ones that don't, because every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. And most importantly, we can't forget to ask ourselves, what am I afraid of? I've gotten into the habit of asking myself this question quite often because I'm often afraid. But the more I pound at this question, the less I fear. And the less I fear, the more actions I take. I'm afraid of being a failure and being a big disappointment. And I'm insanely afraid of never making a difference in the world. Not being able to complete my life's purpose sounds horrifying to me. And I really don't want to live an unfulfilled life. But being fearful is inevitable. It is our fight or flight instinct. We can either face fear, fall to it, or we can flow with it. And I'm trying to do the latter. Fear is not our enemy. It's actually our guide, our protector, and our friend. We use fear as a shield to make smart decisions. And we use fear as a compass to make the right decisions. And we have two options as to what we want to do with fear. We can either have fear control what we do, or we can control what we do with fear. Either way, we're going to be afraid. So I say we might as well be fearfully in control of our lives and flow with what fear has to offer. Fear is a friend who pushes us to become better human beings. And I appreciate what fear has done for me. On that note, I think you will really like this one episode about Tim Ferriss. I believe it's it's by NPR Guy Raz. It's his like podcast of like how it's built, how I built this, whatever it's called. I'll send it to you. It's so good. And all right, guys, I am gonna go sleep now. It is 12:20, so a little late, and I gotta wake up early tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoy this video and enjoy some of the things I share with you guys. With that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye. -bye.